2019 and we're getting ready for our fourth season at Legio. We have a really exciting season ahead. We have a lot of people coming to help us out, including 15 staff members and about 75 volunteers. Uh, the volunteers come from all over the world and all different walks of life. Uh, some of them are archaeology students, uh, but most of them aren't. Uh, many are people who are just looking for something new and interesting to do for the summer. You know what I need? I need um I need a vacuum cleaner. A dust vacuum. See, that's one of the problematic spaces though, so we're going to have to clear it out, like right there. <laughs> In this corner, as you can have seen from other parts of the base, this uh, southeast corner is more or less where the containers are and didn't find anything, primarily because all of the paving stones of the courtyard were robbed away and we just get immediately down into sterile soil. As we get closer and closer <coughs> to us, we get closer and closer to the southern wall. And that's where we can begin to understand. So, this white stuff is the sub-foundation for the pavement of the courtyard. And right at this point, we have this long wall which crosses these several squares. This is the stylobate for the colonnade that you see around here. You are standing in Area C of the 2019 excavations here at Legio, the Roman camp of the Sixth Legion Ferrata. Um, 
what we have here is the southeast corner of what was originally the large courtyard of the Principia, the main building of the Roman camp. And what we're trying to do is work out what the two sides of this large building looked like here. Over here, we have the edge of the courtyard, probably the southeast corner, and it was surrounded by a colonnade. This wall here probably supported the columns, which were open air, supporting a roof uh, that allowed people to walk out of the sun or out of the rain, but still open to the air. Uh, the troughs next to it, of course, were drainage both from the roof and from the courtyard itself. And if you look over here, they come down to a drain. Uh, you see these nice uh, capstones over the sewer itself where the water ran. And that sewer uh, is about a meter or more deep. Very uh, good, strong, solid Roman architecture. Come more, come more, come more. Right, so this, you know, Rhodian jar handle here, it came from Rhodes. That's very interesting. Yeah, and uh, the Roman pottery, it has these ridges sometimes, and uh, it's very interesting. There's a huge variety, and sometimes they're very wide. Right, it's just a different style of the potter. Right, so we can see the potter's handiwork. got here is a float tank for archaeobotanical flotation. Uh, basically what we do is we take uh, sediment samples and we dump them into a liquid medium, in this case water, uh, in order to get the carbonized uh, botanical remains to float to the top uh, so that they can be sieved out of the, uh, the dirt, basically. Uh, we 
can tell all sorts of things from this. It's useful for telling us, you know, uh, what's in the soil? What are people growing? What are people eating? Uh, is the food that they're eating being produced locally or is it being bought and brought in from afar? And the last one, it's a little harder to explain cost distance to runoff. Cost distance is a big thing in GIS where people don't travel in straight lines, right? How far is it in an easy to travel way? So it might be easier to travel around here to water as opposed to here. There are a lot of different jobs on an excavation project. Um, it's a pretty grueling experience, but it's also a lot of fun. Uh, we work from really early in the morning until really late at night and only take a few small breaks along the way. Uh, we have people who are, of course, moving lots of dirt, people who are sifting, people who are cleaning, uh, administrators, people in charge of recording what we're finding, uh, technology specialists that are recording those details uh, digitally. Uh, there's quite a lot of work to do on excavation, so we need a lot of people and a really good disciplined staff to make it happen. I'll make sure. I don't know. Uh, what is yeah, it? Yeah, 38. Yeah, it was done. Yeah. So awesome. We thought it was a wreath on the side. objects that we find in either pottery reading or roof tile reading. Um, so when uh, the archaeologists or directors of the dig uh, go through the pottery or the roof tile that we find here at Legio, uh, sometimes we find objects that aren't pottery or roof tile. So for example, this is a pipe fragment. Uh, this is a giant brick. Uh, this is an amphora toe, as, as one of our directors called it, pretty much like a leg of an amphora. Um, so we find a lot of different things that aren't what they're supposed to be, uh, so we put them in a different bag. So that's what I'm doing right here, right now. These tags are filled out in the, um, in the field as objects are found. And what these tags allow us to do is track the information uh, relating to these objects once they're taken out of the ground. So they allow us to provide context to uh, really all the artifacts that we're looking at and that we're taking out and preserving. So really, it's all about redundancy, making sure that people who, in the future who are going to be studying this have many ways of connecting the, uh, the information in the database with the information uh, that is on the tag and finding the two artifacts. So what we've interpreted from that is that the Romans didn't really like the local... Uh, is there any verification, I guess, in the documentation? Yeah. Kind of, uh, what else could it be? Type? It's an inference. Thank you. 
Go, 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 go. As well, I'll never have one. Okay. Yeah, that's good. You're doing fine. Yeah. What I've learned here is that, uh, like, how basic room and camp are supposed to work because I never did that before. I'm supposed to study Paleolithic sites, so it's completely new for me. So yeah, I learned how to dig architecture, which is nice because it's the first time. Yeah, if you are like into Roman stuff and if you like to move dirt and get sweaty in the sun, you will enjoy this for sure. Like, it's the perfect place to do it. You have the time to visit sites around, which is nice. The team is cool. We have the lecture every day, which is interesting. So you can learn a lot if you come here, which is really great as a student. So yeah. Come on. And what we look for in that archaeological animal are the general trends. If all you have are the like you have deposits that are very specific, these are kind of specialized behaviors that might be going on there. Some students are in classes who are reading older material and say and it you know talks a lot about like nobody ate fish. Yeah. Go. I just Photogrammetry is a really cool uh, technology because it actually uses, it starts with, with a pretty simple piece of technology, a camera. Um, and by taking a lot of photos of one object or one place, um, we are able to reconstruct a 3D model of that object or place. Um, and here at the site, we use it for, um, we essentially use it for what we at one point would have called top plants, where we have, um, you know, very skilled uh, sketch artists. They would take a lot of measurements and they would try to draw what the square looked like at the end of each locus or the end of each day. Got it. So the total station is piece of equipment that we've been using to um, get points right to the middle. So we can find an artifact and we can take a point on it and we're going to know exactly where the artifact is found um, in the strata um, and in the world really. So for everything that we open, everything that we close, every artifact that we discover, um, we've got an exact geometric point um, that the total station takes. So every morning we have to turn this on, we have to resection and then we can take as many points as we like throughout the day and that gets imported into the computer afterwards and then we turn it into a beautiful map that we can use um, this year and next year and hopefully in a variety of publications. <laughs> Yeah. You need to stand under the flag here. Oh yeah. yeah this, this, this is the million dollar moment. This is Big Sean, Big Alpha, and Belvoir. It's the B day. Um, and you guys will also be returning around four. Uh, Matt says there's still a companies going on, literally in their backyard. In the case of Kimo Um So we really appreciate your sort of liaison. <laughs> the idea. <laughs> I'm putting this lecture in the sequence was to tell you a little bit about the Roman army, uh, how it works, how it's organized, and then try to tie that back together uh, with legionary bases. And we do that a, a couple of times.
Oh, really? And like, yeah, because I... In the theater, it sort of makes their daily lives just... It makes their exceptional lives, exceptional parts of their lives, kind of seem very close. So, it's really a town where there's a synagogue, um, a Christian building, because for the most part, literary sources don't even mention the existence of these things or the practice of writing in these particular places. Um, but they tell us information we otherwise don't know about the types of places Jews visited in antiquity. model has in the hydraulic lifting areas, but it doesn't need it. It has this nice bronze look. Um, it's obviously uh, based on archaeological work, on survey work, uh, and other things as well, and some conjecture, but it's pretty... However, we can see a lot of the Byzantine city here, and that is what, more or less what's represented within the fortifications here, and what we're going to be seeing down below. base and the exit being situated precisely where any offenders outside of the moat, in this case, could not see the exit. After lunch, our uh, last stop at Beit Alpha is a, a fairly short one.
So welcome everybody. So firstly what I'd like to do is I'd like to thank the staff of the Albright because it's the staff of the Albright that really enables the Institute to continue in, uh, and, and do all of the things we do. If anyone really wants to revitalize the tradition of going into the fountain, which was a July 4th tradition back in the 70s, we would encourage that. So thank you very much for coming and enjoy yourself. Legio is not just about scientific research and hard work, of course. We also run an archaeological field school here in which students can take extra courses as part of the program. Uh, they go to lectures in the afternoons, uh, they take specialized workshops during the day, and on weekends we take them on field trips to other sites in the area to help contextualize the site. So the archaeological field school is really an important part of our scientific research helping to train the next generation of people. One of the uh, important things we need to do in an excavation is to find all the artifacts. We find them by when we dig, sometimes we just see them, but smaller things. Uh, when we sift, I'm here sifting. Some squares we sift everything, some we sift a ratio, one out of four, one out of ten. We put the soil in here, shake it. We're looking for any artifact. <laughs> Monumentalize something, right? If this was a monument these days, you would try to make it look 
more paid for it. <laughs> but in Byzantine aesthetics, I can get to Christian pilgrimage. It is Constantine's mother of uh, health. I can see it here. No, that's what we were asking you to When was your test? At the fork that comes to this edge right here. It's possible. Just, just right here. It's possible. That's what I mean. Instead of rolling yeah. it, we're going to shimmy, shimmy it. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Shimmy with something inside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if Let's we clean up this, this yeah. and then we will zuck, zuck, zuck. Yeah, now you have to lift all of these up there. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Artifact illustration, I typically am in the office doing most of my work because I need specific lighting, but this season we found also a lot of work stones, so that's why I'm out here doing a lot of my work. Not most of it now, so what I, what I do, right, um, while I'm illustrating. So typically when I'm working on a piece, especially something large like this, I will clean it off to make sure I can see all of the shadows, all of the um, measurements. Then I take measurements, every angle, um, I do a top view, and then I also do a side view. Uh, so I will get all the measurements, and then I will draw it out to scale, and then I will do um, shadowing and detail. There, famously in 2005, he excavated a building that had a beautiful mosaic with uh, three inscriptions on them. One, which is paid for by a centurion, uh, another one which is dedicated by three women, and another one which uh, was dedicated to... done. If you oh. could just pull that out, huh? we'll, oh. we'll do what we said, whatever Susan's plan was. Just the okay. bags and so all that kind of stuff to let we'll you guys Let's get Susan. Yeah, we need to clean off a little more on the side. Up. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Did you go all, all the way through? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, um, right. Oh, some of the places that we've been, I've uh, been, uh, I, I say what you see, even if you walk through as it is for participating excavation in New England in the Harvard Forest. One of these things did in about two hours, but the whole thing. Now sitting in the middle, near the middle of the result of our four weeks of excavating here at Legio. Uh, we've worked our way down. You can see behind me we've had multiple squares that have been combined now into one big area. Um, we've produced a lot of fun stuff out of here. Uh, one of the biggest emphasis, emphasis of this program is the responsibility of documenting what you're excavating because when you're excavating it, you're destroying it. And if you don't have the ability to document it well, uh, you're not doing your job well. Um, so that's been a big learning process as well about how to, how to do archaeology responsibly. It's been a quality learning experience for me. Um, at Montana State, I'm a history major. I'm doing a master's in history. Um, and I'm hoping to use my experience from this to integrate more archaeology into my history thesis for my master's, uh, which is which will be great. Uh, kind of bring some, some interdisciplinarity to it. Okay. Uh, our 
course doesn't quite fit this model, but it does fit better this great model that we've also been using from Bulgaria. It doesn't seem to go anywhere at present, though uh, Deb has suggested that we may have um, a karstic cave here, a cave that's uh, worn out naturally through the flow of water, and it may go through smaller fissures down below into some larger cavern deeper. We don't want to dig the entire Principia. We want to leave something for future generations, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Move on to other things. Uh, but I think we're sort of obligated in our full published description to finish this center to the north half. So thank you all very much. We've had a good season, and I hope you go back to wherever you're going and say, that was a good experience. It was hot, it was miserable at times. <laughs> the hot wind yesterday was sort of maybe the climax of it, but uh, it does uh, it. it's yeah. been a good, it's, it's, been a good yeah. Yeah. it's like they say childbirth is, in, in the midst of it, you're like, what? to give you a good insider's view of what an excavation is like, uh, what staff and volunteers do all day, uh, and some of the exciting parts of an archaeological <laughs> Yes, everybody did a lot of work this summer and did a lot of very good work. And we thank you very, very much. It was a successful season. And thank you very much. And we hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. Woo! Yeah. Well, that's a brief look at two weeks on an archaeological excavation. You can see that the people work hard all day. They get up super early. They go to bed super late. Uh, they make wonderful discoveries and contribute to our knowledge of the past. I want to take a moment to thank all of the staff and students for their hard work, and I hope through this video you had an opportunity to appreciate their work as well.